I'm here in Kirkgetholm and I'm going to run down the Pennine Way to Edale, which is about 268 miles plus or minus. Um, yeah, down the Pennine Way. going to go up to the Cheviot, which I haven't been up to before. So this is an inclusion that uh, the boys put in on what we call the FKTs. And because I haven't been to the Cheviot before, it would be quite nice to go up there, hopefully for sunrise, that's the plan. Um, then we head over the Cheviot's Windy Guile down into Burness. Uh, I think there's a few fire roads around there that take you on into Bellingham. And from Bellingham, uh, we head to Middleton, maybe, over... I don't think there's anything big to go over. The Hadrian's Wall, we've got to do it somewhere in there, there's Hadrian's Wall. Here we go, let's not miss that bit. Greenhead, I forgot Greenhead. Um, and lots of places called like Twice Brood and Once Brood, um, which should be quite fun. Um, and then I've got Crossfell somewhere, uh, and Dufton, ending in Dufton. Dufton, I'm sure I've got to go over High Cup Nick, down Cauldron Snout, um, and then I end up in Middleton. Right, so let's not skip that bit. And from Middleton, we go to the highest pub in Britain, so Tan Hill. Uh, from Tan Hill, I'm gonna make my way to the Peak District via um, Malham Cove, which is pretty cool, um, and some other peaks and bogs, lots of bogs, flagstones, hopefully, a few hills, and then you're there, Edel, Nags Head, apparently. <laughs> I think I did a right on that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's always good to do these things as quickly as possible. Uh, the last time I ran it in summer, I came south to north and it took 82 hours ish. Um, so anything faster than that's a bonus. Um, so let's see how it goes. Three, two, one, go, Sam! Woo! Off she goes. Go on, Sabs, have a blast. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> See you at Burness. Right now, it's windy and dry, and I think it will be like this tomorrow. But after that, I do believe the weather should improve, and by Monday, it might even be hot, hot, hot. So if I'm in shorts in Edale, I'll be a very happy person. <laughs> Will it differ from the Wainwrights? Like, not just in terms of the length of things. Oh, okay. The Wainwrights is challenging because the mountains are higher, you're constantly up, down, up, down. The terrain is very, very difficult and very, very technical. You're not following a, a marked bridle way, which the Pennine Way is a marked bridle way, albeit not very well marked at times, but it is marked and people do know the route. Um, on the Wainwrights, no one really knows the route because it could be anything you like from summit to summit. You're often completely off any trods just on the fell and so it's a lot it's a lot harder on the body um, constantly up down up down whereas this although there are a few ups and downs you know cross fell is the high point no it's not as anywhere near as high as scarfell pike um, and you're not up there for that long um, you've got a, a little technical bit down cauldron style that's probably the worst it gets um, and then a lot of it is track and trail, so it should be a more kind of flowing type of run rather than Wainwrights, which can be a bit, um, you know, a stagger, you know, a massive change in pace from up and down. Whereas hopefully this will be a bit more consistent and flowing. What do you like most about doing these, um, to, to some people, crazy things? I just like being outdoors and I have to say my motivation is not to get a record as such, it's, it's fun and, and you know I love that people like to come out and, and carry my bag and, and offer me food and, and do all my stuff. I'm so, so grateful for all the people that help because actually none of it is really possible without, without that help. I mean, especially something as big as the Wainwrights. Um, I would love one day to try and do that self-supporting. 
but you know it's a lot of gear and a lot of um so much to do and, and i'm really in awe actually of people that have done that and i think that is definitely something that needs to be done but but it is so nice to run and not have to stop i, I really hate stopping i, <laughs> I, I really just like going and the same with the pen i weigh i mean it's just such a fantastic journey i mean i would even enjoy doing it by you know stopping each night at bed and breakfast or something just because it's just a fun journey um but i i quite like the continuous running because actually when you stop things start to hurt and, <laughs> and your body starts, starts trying to recover so i actually quite like just going continuously it's quite nice <laughs> A lovely, lovely day. So I'm just going to wander down the track and see if I can see Sabs coming so I can get a really good shot of her as she flies through this first checkpoint. Doubting she'll want to stop for long here because she'll be super fresh still. Great start, guys. Well done, Sabs. Good one, Pacers. Thanks for the great photos, Mark. <laughs> right, what kit? Um... Do you want a new watch? I've got one. Cool. Beautiful morning. Yeah. It was windy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> yeah. I made things a bit tricky because the guys are really good at jumping in front and trying to block it, but oh. sometimes the path's not wide enough. But yeah, uh, yeah, it was fine. Good. Yeah. yeah. Nice sunrise. Really my adapters are not very happy. Oh, so we might need to just ease into it. Yeah, pulling green heads off about that. Cool. I might be able to fix me uh, adapters, hand hill or something. Yeah. Okay. Because then probably we'll just get worse. Uh, cool. <laughs> See ya! You did me my little sandwiches with my special bread and um, smashed avocado and cheese and tomato. Like normal food is good. What are you up to there then, Mumbo? I am trying to make an avocado, cheese and tomato sandwich with extra butter. So it's basically a heart attack waiting to happen with some healthy stuff in it. <laughs> and I'm now trying to squash it into submission. When I can't get food down or I need a sudden kick because I've been lax and not eaten enough food and need a sugar hit, then these mountain fuel jellies are good because they're not too sweet. They've quite got a decent amount of water in as well and you can just sink them quite quickly and they don't make me feel ill. Um, so those were really good. And then they've got the cola one with caffeine in. So that's also handy at night if you're just having a bit of a moment and you need a bit of caffeine. And then I really like the recovery fuel, which I know I'm not recovering because I'm still moving, um, but I actually think that it's probably quite good to keep getting the protein in somehow. Um, and you know, the things that you're eating are probably, you're probably not digesting that protein to break it down into lots of little bits and your stomach has to work quite hard. Whereas I think, you know, I crave it actually, the chocolate milkshake mm -hmm. are just, oh my God. And then after I finish, then that's all I have. I mean, I just live off that stuff. You have tea with a lot of sugar in on I these things, don't you? I think they can't really call it tea. That is just my um, my fuel for running. So it's like you show the tea bag and then, you know, to, in order for me to drink it, you have to put a load of milk in because it's not too hot and then throw three sugars in there because I think if you're having anything in can put sugar in it, that's calories. Any way of getting calories in you while you're going is brilliant. So sugar is excellent. Yeah, we put a lot of um, uh, that uh, mountain yeah, fuel the in the water as well. Yeah. So I like, yeah. That raw one is good because it has no flavour. Mm -hmm. So if you were drinking the really sugary type energy drinks, then you'd get your ulcerated tongue and stuff, and yeah. you would just think of all the sugar stuff. But the raw one's really good because you actually just can't really taste it. It's in there. And it, you get your electrolytes in, you get some energy, and yeah, it's great. So yeah, I did have that in every single... Yeah, I had one water, didn't I, and one mountain fuel, which is really good. Got watch. Yeah, so how long is the next leg? Uh, only two hours. Two hours. To Greenhead. Yeah. Yeah, and then only one hour to the A something or other. Okay. And then Slaggyford. The weather says 30% chance of rain at 10. Okay, it's not bad. 60% chance midnight. Okay. And 50 or something at 1. Like so, that. yeah. You're doing really well. It's, right. it's awesome. Working? Yeah.
dark now and we're just waiting for Sabs. <laughs> I don't dark know where we drizzly. are. Where are we? I forgot where we are. Um, at a junction where the P9 way crosses a road. Where are we Gary? <laughs> ready for the crazy night time. Is that why you've got your green jacket on? Yeah, spine ready. Well, spine yeah. ready. Spine. <laughs> Always there with a the sound bite. We've got Kim here ready to go, ready to rock and roll <laughs> through the night. Nearly here. <laughs> Thank goodness for trackers, huh? <laughs> hey, well done, guys. Yeah. What do you need? Cup of tea? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to come up to the thing or yeah. Come bring, yeah, food. Yeah, food's just coming down. Be yep. We've got lasagna. Do you need an extra layer? I've got an extra layer. Sabs, doing amazing. You're an hour ahead, Sabs. I can cope very well with the sleep deprivation. What I found was that my body couldn't from the fluid retention. So the lack of horizontal time meant that the fluid all just gravitated and I, I was probably carrying around five or six kilos of fluid by the end, which is hard work. So if I can try and dissipate some of that by just lying down a little bit more, um, that would be good. But I'm, I'm not good at stopping. I'd much rather keep going. <laughs> so we'll have to see. I've put it in my schedule. Let's see if I go with it. <laughs> um, I've got a couple of messages for you. Annie is ready with milk for you. I was like, what's it called? Shaggy? Scraggy? Slaggy head. Amazing. Thank and you so much. the weather looks so weather looks kind of bad until four. Bad and subs, keep going. Well done. <sighs> See you then, Kim. Only an hour and a half. I'm very bad at training. I'm, I'm, I, I don't have a coach. I don't think anyone can tell me what to do. I don't have the time to do stuff when I should and you know follow a plan that would make me the fastest runner in the whole world. You know, I just I just do it to just relax. And I, I really enjoy when I can just grab a map and just 
draw a reel that I fancy doing, which is always far too large for my little legs. You know? <laughs> um, but I love it. That's, that's my favourite fun thing to do. Yeah, just being getting yourself lost in the mountains for ages yeah. and ages. Woohoo! Morning! <laughs> Howdy! <laughs> We've got croissants. <laughs> yeah, you've done so well. Seat here. There's croissants coming. Movie's getting boring. I need chips. Chips. We'll try and find you some chips at Middleton then, yeah? yeah. Chips. And you've got chips at Tan Hill then. But you've got like five hours ahead to Middleton. So look forward to chips. We'll try and find some. Yeah, it's up the road, first of all. Anyone touch my feet? Yeah, you don't want to that in, but at least you're not What was your oh, kind so of foot setup? I always run in Las Portiva Mutants. I have tried other fit shoes, lots of shoes actually, and, and lots in the Las Portiva range actually, but the Mutants suit me best. Um, so it's going to be a combination of what suits your individual feet. But for me, the Mutants are good because they have good cushioning. Um, but remember, I'm small. Um, I really like them because for me, they're good on all surfaces um, so so that I can go from fell to road to you know bog to mud and, and they're good I mean they always have good grip um, they also dry quite well um, so I can be completely immersed in bog one minute and then you know if there's a bit of sun and a bit of wind actually within an hour they feel dry again I thought she seemed a little bit, uh, slightly disheartened with the wind. Uh, I think she's had the wind against her all the way. And a bit concerned that she didn't want to stop because people, she might let people down. Um, that's not the way it is though, people don't worry about that. They just want to succeed. And I thought she looked, apart from being a little bit disheartened, I thought she looked good physically. And she was, you know, walking fine. So, I think if she wants to finish it, I think she'll do it okay. How's it going? It's windy, it's done or not. Yeah, it's really, really windy. I want to throw the towel in. Ooh. You want to throw the towel? I in? wanted to throw the towel in, yeah. <gasps> when? Why? What happened? Well, I'm just like running into the wind for uh, 36 hours. It's quite annoying. Yeah. It doesn't need to be this way. Yeah. What are your words of wisdom then, Mike? Well, you're, you're not going to throw the towel in, are you? No one else. Well, I thought it would be a sensible thing to do, given that it's not the way I can choose any day I like to go. <laughs> I think you get to the point, I used to get to the point where I put that much effort in. The disappointment of not carrying on is worse than the effort of doing it. You know what I mean? I'd, just, I'd feel bad for letting people down. That's probably my only motivation for people on, to be honest. I should ruin the panel work. May as well just... I don't, think, I don't think other people see that way. I don't think people worry about it. Yeah. They just want to help you. Oh yeah, yeah. they do, yeah. It'll make a shit yeah. film if you quit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean exactly, a lot of reasons like that. So I won't. But I'll if you're injured... Then. I'm not injured in nature. Yeah. No, I'm not injured at all. Yeah. I'm just like, uh, this, is, this is something beyond my control. Get Darren and Rich to run ahead of you and be a wind block. Yeah. Mm. And she's done 140 now. Yeah. How many miles have you done though? Don't tell her, she doesn't, doesn't want to know. <laughs>